Yeah, I would testify, absolutely. It's a scam. It's a scam. The gang order is not even testifying? No, you won't stop me from testifying. The gang order is not to testify. Do you plan to testify in court? Uh, probably so. I would like to. I mean, I think so. Okay. After weeks and weeks of saying he would, it turns out Donald Trump is not testifying <laughs> in his first criminal trial. After all. This morning, the defense rested its case after only one day, calling no more witnesses after Robert Costello. And I guess since it's Trump, no one's really surprised at that. No one's really that surprised. But just imagine, if you will, what the reaction would be if it were any other former president on trial, if you could imagine any other former being on trial, and they failed to take the stand. Back with me, Katie Fang, Danny Savalos, Tristan Snell. Uh, Danny, as a defense attorney, I'm sure you would never put someone like Donald Trump on, tri on, on the stand because you, of course, can't stop lying. But comment, if you will, on the fact that he did not and what impression that might leave. Well, back when he promised, all I kept thinking was, yeah, I mean, ever since the whole Mexico would pay for the wall thing, I, I didn't believe a promise that Donald Trump was going to make about whether or not he was going to testify. And by the way, when it comes to white collar cases, often you have defendants who think, if I could just get on the stand, I could explain all my problems away. And as the trial wears on, uh, they realize what they're really in for. Maybe Trump mm -hmm. really believed he was going to take the stand. I doubt it. In all likelihood, he was never going to take the stand in his own mind, no matter what he even told his attorneys. But in a way, the only person who ever knew for sure was Donald Trump, because he has an absolute constitutional right to take that stand. And he could have decided right up until the last minute whether or not he wanted to. So really, it wasn't even that much up to his attorneys, although they could strenuously advise him not to take the stand. The bottom line is few people can handle the crucible of cross-examination. And most defense attorneys, contrary to popular belief, we're risk averse. I do <laughs> not want to snatch defeat from the jaws of victory. If I think I have a shot uh, at not putting on a case and not putting on my client, I don't want to be that courthouse myth of the guy. Did you hear about that guy who put his client on the stand and torpedoed his own case? So there was very little chance that Donald Trump was ever going to take the stand, no matter what he promised. Yeah, and the cross-examination would have been brutal. Let me play Donald Trump today. Let me just give you an example of why, because his, his brain don't work good. I keep telling you all that. Here, here's Donald Trump today. The judge hates Donald Trump. Just take a look. Take a look at him. Take a look at where he comes from. Kristen, take a look at where he comes from. Judge Marshawn uh, is, uh, say, my, say uh, Judge Marshawn is from Colombia, and he pointed that out. Take a look at where he comes from. That is where he comes from. Mm. I just want to point out that another judge who comes from Colombia is Aileen Cannon, uh, the judge that's saving mm -hmm. his behind in the documents theft case. Another judge who comes from Latin America is Judge Curiel, who Donald Trump disparaged as yep. he was finding against him in, as you very much well know, the Trump University case. What do you make of disparaging yep. the judge's race as a tactic? Not a great one, but also <laughs> quite on brand for him, right? I mean, at the end of the day, a lot of the outside the courtroom antics are really for him to play to uh, the media and cult that surround him uh, and to be able to hit his uh, followers up for money. So, you know, pushing that racism button is probably a good way for him to uh, separate uh, his followers from their wallets a little bit more. So, sure, go ahead and go there. It's not going to affect the what's going on inside the courtroom, but it's a tell uh, and an on-brand one for him. Uh, but also, Danny's totally right about, like, how difficult it is to get Trump to do anything. I actually think we might have seen what would almost be the impossible, the fact that I think Donald Trump's lawyers actually might have convinced him to do something they wanted to do rather than something he wanted to do. I think he wanted to testify and he got talked out of it. Maybe he did chicken out a little bit too, but I think he actually probably thought he was going to get up there and be the smartest guy in the room and explain everything. And I think maybe finally after the disaster of his testimony in the E. Jean Carroll case a few months ago, he has now realized that maybe that wasn't such a good idea and his attorneys managed to push him away from testifying. I, I, I feel like Katie has thoughts. <laughs> I feel Just, it. He was he was never he was never going to do it, right? I mean, he's crazy like a fox. I think that he has a lot of screws that are loose, but I do think he's crazy like a fox. And so he was never going to testify. I just think what's ridiculous about it, though, is 
you know, we we know because to Tristan's point, there's an entire ecosystem that exists outside of that courtroom. But I want to be very clear. You, you see a jury based upon them not having preconceived notions about this case. And you kind of screen out the people that maybe have too much knowledge about this. But there are two lawyers that are on this jury. Mm. Those two lawyers may not be criminal defense attorneys. Mm -hmm. They may not be former yeah. prosecutors. They may be big law or corporate lawyers right now. But they yeah. know that right to testify, and they know what that means. If you weren't going to testify, Donald, then where's Alan Weisselberg? Why don't you ship mm. him in from Rikers? Why don't you have him explain your side of the story? Because you knew that that was also a loose cannon as well. And so I think the jury... You never underestimate their intelligence and their common sense. They leave, you're supposed to leave certain biases and prejudices at the door when you come in and you're cloaked with the presumption of innocency for the criminal defendant. But we all know that they're not stupid and they're not ignorant about the reality of who Donald Trump is. And so maybe they wanted to hear from Donald because I think it's human nature to want to hear from the other side. But I don't think anybody credibly believed that he was going to take the stand and actually say anything in his own defense. Uh, let me play Lanny Davis, uh, who used to represent Michael Cohen. He's making sort of his what he his was his closing argument sort of would be and i want to get you guys takes on what you think the actual closings will sound like take a listen the facts speak without michael cohen he confirms but he doesn't need to be believed because he's corroborated fact one both mr pecker and hope hicks say that the money paid to stormy daniels was politically motivated that is a fact from their testimony not michael cohn fact two the weiselberg document lists all the money that michael cohn was reimbursed times two divided by 12 are checks mr trump wrote for thirty five thousand dollars those are facts without michael cohn's testimony uh let me give each of you i'm gonna put 30 seconds on the clock for each of you tristan i'm gonna start with you first does that sound like what you think you will hear in closing arguments and do you think there'll be any surprise jury instructions i think that is what we're gonna hear uh, i think lanny davis uh, was pretty much right on that i think that the emphasis you're gonna hear from the prosecutors is look at all these other witnesses and the documents are even more important than the witnesses i think that what we were talking about earlier in the show about all of those key documents joy that, that you pointed out i think the prosecution is going to go through those brick by brick by brick jury instructions we got a little bit of a taste of it today uh from the talk uh, from the pre-charge uh, conference i think one of the things that's key there is that the unlawful means uh, yeah. that is at issue here uh, that they don't, the jurors have, can have different ideas about what that unlawful means were. Uh, so that, I think that's really key there. It's basically, if they were falsifying records and up to no good while they were doing it, that'll get you there, yeah. basically.